Well, the temperature is still hot around there, despite the fact a frontal system moved through last night. You probably heard those storms, a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder, and some very heavy rain as it moved on through. But unfortunately, it didn't really usher in uh, much cooler air, slightly cooler out there right now. Here in Noonan, the winds up around five miles per hour on the light side. And air quality as we head into our Thursday is going to be suffering just a bit. In fact, we have a code orange day now in place on our Thursday. Unhealthy for sensitive groups. So if your child has asthma or you suffer from asthma, it's a take action day, which means keep that inhaler close at hand just in case you may need it. So those Temperatures out there today uh, slightly cooler as we take a look at the temperature change the past 24 hours, five degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday here in Atlanta. But look at them, Blairsville, 13 degrees cooler. They're definitely feeling more of the core cooler air move across the county, uh, across the uh, state line and the county line. And down to our south, you can see very little change. In fact, it's warmer in Thomaston and Eatonton today than it was yesterday. So that current feels like Still up around 101 in Eatonton, 97 in Covington, and 102 in Peachtree City. So we really didn't cool down much from the front. I think it'll feel a little bit more comfortable the next couple of days because notice that orange color retreating here uh, in front of that frontal boundary. And that means drier air represented by the blue on the map will be moving in. So how will that impact our forecast, the timing of storms and the weekend? We'll have that forecast coming up. Still ahead in the A scene, honoring a beloved rapper. T.I.'s Trap Music Museum adds a special section just for Nipsey Hussle. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Wednesday's edition of the A scene, and we are talking about TI's Trap Music Museum. Of course, everyone knows about it, right? Well, guess what? They just added a very special exhibit. Some of your favorite Atlanta celebs came together for an unveiling of the Trap Music Museum's new exhibit honoring the late Nipsey Hussle. <laughs> Thank you.
Now, T.I. wanted to honor the West Coast rapper in a huge way, so last night he tapped Brian Kyrgios to bring the mural to life. And VH1's cameras rolled as several stars from the network's unscripted drama Family Hustle appeared at the event. We saw Latoya Luckett, Regina Carter, and one of my favorite ATL songstresses, Monica. It goes without saying, man, how, how, how prolific and, and just how significant of a legacy Lil Bro left behind. So we knew for us to put together collections of art to exhibit what an artist meant to the culture. There's no way we couldn't do it, you know what I mean? But it really brought us together in a way that I feel like we have been separated for far too long. His death really brought a lot of people that didn't even know one another together, so to honor him is only right. Yeah, and T.I. continues to move the culture forward with everything that he does. All right, so next up, behind the scenes look of the Georgia film show Lodge 49. It's on AMC. Now, season two of the AMC series kicked off this week, and the Georgia film office actually recapped well, what made filming here so special in Georgia? Take a listen. Long Beach is not a foresty area like parts of Atlanta are, so we can get rid of some of those trees and replace them with palm trees. We shoot basically 12.5% of every episode in Long Beach, one day out of eight, and the other seven days are Atlanta, and of those seven days, only three or four are on a stage, and the rest are out on the streets of Atlanta that somehow, by the time they're translated to television, look just like they're in Long Beach. See, because Atlanta's where it's at. Now, in season one, we were introduced to Dud, who is an ex-surfer who seemed to drift after the death of his father. And in season two, we'll see Dud gain closure about his father's disappearance. But we'll also see plenty of curveballs being thrown his way. Catch an all-new episode on Monday of Lodge 49. And a quick Coming to America, the sequel update. It's called Coming to America with the number two. It's just been announced that uh, John Amos is set to return as Cleo McDowell, the owner of McDowell's. And guess Guess what? The woman who played his daughter as Lisa McDowell, the one and only Shari Headley, will also be returning. And Arsenio Hall, James Earl Jones, and Paul Bates are also reprising their roles in the film, the movie, which is filming right now in Atlanta and at Rick Ross's Atlanta home, hits theaters next year. It's gonna be good. Coming up after the break, nearly two dozen people hospitalized after developing severe breathing problems stemming from vaping next the latest in the push to slow down this epidemic with kids and stay at home. <laughs> Thank you.
It has been three weeks since we have heard about federal EPD studies that show an increased cancer risk for people who live around two plants that emit ethylene oxide. Now that's near Smyrna and in Covington. Two months ago, the state conducted preliminary tests of the air and initial results showed elevated levels of the toxic chemical miles from those plants. What about the air at the plants where people live and work or go to school? John Shearick is on the story for us tonight. Georgia's EPD has been saying publicly that the amount of cancer causing ethylene oxide emitting from the Sterigenics plant near Smyrna and the BD Bard plant in Covington is well within federal EPA limits. But on June 14th, miles away from Sterigenics and BD Bard, EPD conducted limited testing of the air at its testing site in South DeKalb County and found elevated levels of ethylene oxide there, 15 times higher than the level EPA says can start causing increased cases of cancer. But the state told no one about the tests. So what's the air quality around the plants? I would just like to see some testing. Period. State Senator Jen Jordan, who represents the people who live near the Sterigenics plant, supports the independent testing that local governments are about to fund, separate from any testing that the state EPD or the federal EPA may have done or may do. Because clearly they're not even communicating the results they're getting. Um, if it doesn't line up with the narrative that they're trying to tell us. That narrative, as the EPA told me in an email, is that the plants are only some of the possible sources of ethylene oxide in the air, maybe not even the primary sources. Kirstine Popper and others who live near Sterigenics frustrated. If things need to happen quickly. Again, if we're talking about an increased risk, the longer it takes to figure things out, that's the longer people's health is being put in danger. I think what we've seen is that the state isn't going to take any action. The folks locally, their local government officials are on top of it. And if the state's not going to do something, then we're going to have to. Which she says would be to force the plants to close at least until independent testing can confirm the level of their toxic emissions. Thank you.